Over the past several weeks, we've been making really good headway on the 55 Chevy project. Now that the car is up and running, it's time to finish installing the vintage air kit. The condenser and the AC compressor are already mounted and ready to go, but now it's time to start installing everything under the dash, which turned out to be much more of a project than any of us ever thought. While we're busy working on my dad's 55, my dad's got his own little project underway today up at the farm. His 2015 Silverado has a transmission problem and a lifter ticking. So for the last two weeks, he's been nosing around the Chevy dealership looking at new trucks. And as it turns out, they've got a 2022 leftover that never sold, that they're willing to make a good deal on. And evidently, it was a good enough deal to get dad to sign on the dotted line. Extra months of unlimited Wi-Fi included in your trial, so three months altogether. Okay. You dollars you pay for the first month assuming you want to keep it and okay. if you don't want to keep it of course press the on star button in the next 90 days and tell the advisor what you want and they'll adjust it all by the end okay okay you need the three digit magic number no i don't need that okay after going over all the details with the OnStar lady, he went through the drive-thru at McDonald's in his new truck and realized he couldn't figure out how to turn the stereo down. It turns out a lot of things have changed since Dad bought his last new truck in 2015, and he was eager to bring it down to our house and show it off to everybody. There you guys have matching fire trucks. <laughs> Ooh, wow. The truck is definitely very nice inside, but it's probably gonna take dad a little time to get used to. We were trying to explain to him that the headlights are LEDs and they don't have light bulbs anymore. It's crazy. Anyway, once we got done checking out dad's truck, I went back in the shop to check in on Kenny and see how he's doing. How you doing, Kenny? Uh, he's going, he ran into a few snags. You ran into a snag? Yeah. What's yeah. that? The cable drive wipers yeah. are right in the road. So we need to go to an electric wiper system. Now it's hard to imagine as revolutionary as dad's new truck is, the 55 Chevy was just as revolutionary when it came out back in 1955. Not only was it the first year for the 12 volt electrical system, it was also the first year for the TurboFire V8 more commonly known today as the small block Chevy. The 55 Chevrolet was all new, inside and out. Power steering, power brakes, overdrive, and air conditioning were all options, and so were electric wipers. But mom and dad's car came with standard vacuum operated wipers, and according to all the research that we were able to do in the shop, we're gonna have to swap out the stock cable operated wiper assemblies and the vacuum operated motor for a new aftermarket kit that allows more room underneath the dash for the vintage air system. The only problem is, that's gonna set us back a few days. Well, I guess we don't have a choice. Just go ahead and start putting the dash back together enough so that I can drive it uh, so we don't lose anything. I'm gonna call Mark and see if he can hook us up with something. He seems to be the uh, 55 Chevy expert. I'm sure he can come up with something. Now in my younger days, I probably would have just told Kenny, don't worry about the wipers. Gut that stuff, take it out, we're never gonna use them anyway. But if I ever have the opportunity to take the 55 on drag week or take it on a long road trip, I definitely wanna be prepared for wet weather. So I went down to visit Mark and try to drop my problems in his lap. Although it looks like he's got his hands full with his own problems today, Mark is always up for a discussion about working on 55 Chevys. You look a little frustrated oh, today. Oh, you know, I, I said I, I had one mission to accomplish. What's and that? I, and I, we, we, we prepped three times for this thing. What? And it, well, a delivery with a vehicle. I told him exactly where to take it, where to park it, and where to leave it. Guess what they did? They took it, but they left it where it wasn't supposed to go. Where was it supposed to it go? It was supposed to go to Uncle Bucko's. What? Yeah. You're having my brother work I, on your stuff? I had to break down. It was, I, I, I had to do it. You're in a world of hurt. I know, but we screwed it up, so I don't know. <laughs> it may not happen anyway, so. Who screwed it up? Well, not him. He not was me. privy to the information, too, so he knows it happened. So now we're going to have to have another meeting when they get back and regroup. <laughs> so what, what are you doing? All right, I got a problem. Uh, I got a 55 Chevy. I'm trying to put air conditioning in. Yeah. The vintage air kit, I can't put it in with cable operated vacuum wipers. Oh, I have to yeah. convert it to electric. Mm hmm. Yeah. Since they, you're they, the resident 55 Chevy expert. Yeah. Yeah. 
well, I don't have wipers in mine, so I don't worry about that. But anyway, I know how to fix it. I've already made a call. I think we can get it done. About the time I'm making arrangements with Mark for some electric wipers, my brother's gotten his delivery. Mark's transit van has made it to his driveway. Oh, oh pump without a pulley. That's why I can't. So while Jeremy's grumbling in his driveway about having to work on Mark's transit van, I head back to the shop and back the 55 Chevy out to make room for the next project we need to get started on right away. Although my Nova came out of retirement swinging and won its class at the arm drop drags, it came at a cost. The engine is definitely wounded. Don't sound good. It don't sound good at all, does it? <laughs> I guess since we're at a standstill with a 55, then go ahead and start working on this. Now, if you watched the last video on Street Racing Channel, you already know that Billy won class in this car at the arm drop drags down at the Combs Airport. However, the engine sounds like it's hurt really bad. Kenny and I drained the oil out of it and checked the filter. And unbelievably, the oil doesn't look as bad as I thought it would, and neither did the filter for as much noise as this engine's making. I figure, by the sounds of it, we've heard a piston and or possibly bent a connecting rod. But the only way we're going to know for sure is to pull the engine out of the car and take it up to the machine shop and pull it apart. Kenny and I were just about ready to pull the engine up out of the car about the same time my brother returned to A1 Auto Parts to harass Mark about this transit van that's parked in his driveway. What the hell have you got going on? I don't know. You're it's supposed to drop the van off. It was supposed to be peaceful. You were supposed to call me so I can warn the old lady before the van no, gets there. Oh, well, th That way she can here. direct it, these two it, where to well, park the van. He wasn't involved. Correct. He was he was here oh, watching everything Oh, well, then there's that one. So when they left the building, I... I was partial. I'll take 50% of... It, yeah. Whatever happened. I gave him instructions three times. Well, they parked it at my place in the right place once they got there. Right, exactly. That was just from point A to point B was the problem. So. Oh, that is... Yeah, that I got like four phone calls. There's a transit right, van yeah, missing. Was, I was confused. <laughs> Everybody was confused. There was mass confusion. Uh, was, meanwhile, I'm just up at the it, farm trying to mow grass. It, right, exactly. And there was confusion running around. And it was all... And you had involvement in it somehow. And, and you all wonder why I hide at the farm. You're right. I see now. It's, so. Power steering pump better be the right one. Well, it is. Doesn't have pulley on it no, or nothing. No, you got to change all that stuff. It's about the cheapest it. crappy... All I could get. Oh my god. It wasn't god. cheap and crappy. It was just the, all I could get. You power steering fluid too. Oh my god. It's your van. Oh, well I forgot to give you that. So maybe we better get So 50-50 on whether we have the right pump. Well, we already know I don't have enough fluid until now. Yeah. We didn't get lines just in case. How am I supposed to put a guarantee on something being delivered no, by the next morning? I wasn't expecting a guarantee. You're not messing with my brother here. Oh, okay. This is Bucko's shop. Oh, Every job one, gets a one. guarantee. Oh, that's good. By Thursday evening, I'm pretty sure Mark was headed to the bar, and Kenny and I were just finishing up pulling the engine up out of my Nova. I told Kenny just to go ahead and bolt my engine to an engine cradle and leave it in the garage for tonight, because Vicky and I have a little trip we've got to make down to Zanesville. Now, if you remember a few weeks back, Bob and I tuned and dynoed a little 406 small block Chevy up at the machine shop that's supposed to go in Addie's Malibu. And tonight, Vicky and I are going down to visit with them and help them get the engine started up in the car for the very first time. Now, even though the engine had been run in on the dyno and tuned, there's still a possibility for some complications. Addie's dad has just recently installed a completely new fuel system, new pump, new lines, and new fuel pressure regulator. And since he doesn't have a lot of experience working with carbureted engines, he asked if I'd stop down and help him out. Hello! We made it. <laughs> How are you? Are you excited? Yeah. The big day. The big day. Are you ready? Let's go check this thing out. What's the fuel pressure set at? I think it's around seven. Okay. Just checking the float levels. I don't see anything wrong there. So the fuel pressure, I don't ever trust a brand new fuel pressure gauge and regulator and all that. Because sometimes the gauge might say six pounds. 
but then you look at the carburetor and there's a waterfall coming out of the booster. So the float level looks about where it should be for six pounds of fuel pressure. So that checks out. Have we double checked to make sure the plug wires are all on right? Yes. Okay. I trust mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, even though we had the ignition timing set on the dyno, it's always a good idea to double check once the engine's in the car. All right, listen, honey, I'm gonna tell you to crank it over. As soon as you hear it do anything, just stop and wait for me to tell you what to do next, okay? Because it may pop or crack, it may do something crazy, so we'll see what happens. The little small block fired right up and I double checked the ignition timing and double checked oil pressure and let the engine come up to temperature. Eventually, once we had all the air pockets out of the cooling system, we topped off the radiator and fired it back up. That way, Addy's dad can check the transmission fluid level. I think it's safe to say Addie was pretty excited to hear her car run with a new engine for the first time. You did Jimmy Dale proud. Yes. <laughs> Your neighbors love you on a school night. I know. <laughs> you the neighbor? Yeah. Is your mom and dad mad? <laughs> I suppose you could hear this thing, huh? The whole county is hearing it in the house. <laughs> so this thing's going to sound funny because it's got such tiny little headers on it. And without any collector extensions or anything, it's going to pop a little bit and crack when you rev it up. When it comes down, it's going to pop and crack a little bit. But it won't do that after you put exhaust on it and mufflers. Okay. So the carburetor's got me frustrated because it's leaking out both bowls. And I just had that thing apart. And so I don't know exactly what the situation is there. I'd like to take that carburetor with me tonight so I can go back through it again. And I'm, evidently I need to replace some gaskets or something because it's dribbling out both ends of it. So, And then it hasn't been that long since we had that carburetor on this engine on the dyno. Mm -hmm. And when I went to prime the accelerator pump on the secondary, it was stuck. Hmm. And so some reason the fan's not working, which is why it got up to 180 because I had the idling pretty rich, rich enough that it really probably shouldn't have gotten over 160. Um, what's the water temperature now, Addie? Okay. So for the most part last night, everything went pretty well with Addie's engine. But today I've got my own problems to deal with. I figure in the next five minutes I'm gonna have to bring it to June Pup that she's not gonna be able to go with me. On the agenda for today is taking my Nova's engine up to the machine shop, getting it bolted to an engine stand, and getting it disassembled to see what exactly has gone wrong. Just by what I had heard out of the engine down at Combs, and also when we unloaded it off the trailer when we got it home, I think it's got a broken piston at minimum. Now, when we put this engine in the car, we never intended to heads up racing. It was just going to be a 650 index car for right now and a nice street cruiser because I'm sure that the rings were never gapped for boost and hyper eutectic pistons aren't known for longevity in boosted applications. So I feel pretty confident I know what we're going to find when we finally get this engine on the engine stand and get it tore apart. When I got to the machine shop, Bob had just picked Billy's small block engine from his S10 up off the engine stand and was getting ready to bolt it on the dyno. The only thing they're missing is a set of push rods, and they're due to be delivered this afternoon. So while we're waiting for parts to be delivered for Billy's engine, we went ahead and back to 64 in the shop, used a cherry picker to lift the engine out of the bed, and set it on an engine stand so we can start disassembling it. Now typically when we tear up an engine, we tear them up pretty good. So I had prepared myself for worst case scenario. I figure this engine is completely junk. Well, it didn't take us long to tear this one up, Uncle Bob. 
Well, I shouldn't say us. I'm going to say Junior. Junior. It was doing good until he added that last two pounds of boost to it. And he got the win. He did get the win. He got the win. That's all that matters. So I'm guessing possible broken piston. Uh, that's what I'm thinking, okay? Now, why did the piston break? That's the question. I'm thinking possible too tight of a ring gap, or it could have possibly bent a connecting rod and pulled the skirt down next to the counterweight on the crank and knocked the skirt off. I'm not sure yet. We'll find out, I guess, here shortly. I guess. First thing first, Bob pulled the valve covers off to start inspecting the valve train. And that's when we found our first clue as to what's wrong with this engine. Our autopsy is showing serious signs of valve float. We have multiple broken and bent push rods, and we suspect there's gonna be at least one broken lifter. There's serious indications of valve train failure everywhere we look. And in fact, we did have one broken lifter. This one came completely apart. Some of the push rods were damaged so bad, we couldn't get them out of the head. But to my surprise, when we pulled the cylinder heads off, we found all eight pistons completely intact. It appears that this little small block is gonna to live to breathe another day. I really, really thought this thing was blown up. I really idea? thought it was blown up. We ain't dug clear to the bottom of the pile yet, but. <laughs> when Bob rolled the engine over to pull the pan, I was waiting to hear shrapnel. But to my surprise, the bottom end was in perfect condition. Well, it got broke in hard, I know that. It's seated well. <laughs> What are you doing? Cleaning up my car a little bit. Oh. Um, so <laughs> I figured now would be a good time to detail and get it cleaned up because it's been neglected for a while. It has. Since we are doing this giveaway. Mm -hmm. So Billy made some Facebook posts about it today. Mm -hmm. uh, but this will be the first time we've ever mentioned it in a video. Yes. Um, we're doing a giveaway from today. September 8th until November 8th. No, October oh, 8th. sorry, October 8th. <laughs> sorry. From today, September 8th to October 8th. Yes. And we've come out with a new shirt design for the Malibu ever since the big brouhaha down at uh, Edgewater <laughs> when we were using the Mississippi Delay Box. Yeah. Uh, there's been people, you know, wanting Malibu shirts or something to do with that scenario. Yeah. So Billy had a shirt design made up. Uh, of the Malibu leaving the starting line down at Edgewater, mm -hmm. and it says, "Don't hate the player, hate the game." Mm -hmm. Remember, he said that in the video. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Don't hate the player, hate the game. You still got it. Don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> uh, so, we've come up with this shirt design, and uh, what we're going to do is everybody who buys one of the "Hate the Player, Hate the Game" shirts mm -hmm. gets entered for giveaway mm -hmm. to come here. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> so. Remember how Jimmy Dale did that giveaway for his car? Somebody gets to drive yep. Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody's going to get to drive the Malibu. And not only that, they get to hang out with the family yeah, for the day. A little family mm -hmm. get together deal where they get to hang out with us for the day, maybe go to dinner, drive the cars, do a little cruise. Yeah, a day and, in the life. Yeah, a day in the life of. <laughs> what it's like to be maybe go down uh maybe a something. you know maybe a parts run to go see chumpy maybe go visit jegs go yeah, see maybe a... go see uncle terry yeah like go do all the things that we do on a normal what basis. would be a normal day yeah, yeah. you get to experience it <laughs> so, so yeah so october it, it ends october 8th and each shirt purchased is one entry yep yep and it's only for those shirts. Only That's for those shirts. Keep track yeah. of who's in it. Yep. So Alice and I are going to keep track of it, and we're doing the shipping ourselves out of this shop. Yeah, so everything will be shipped from our location. Mm -hmm. The last giveaway we did on the Mustang, some of the stuff was shipped from Ohio our merch guys mm -hmm. down in North Carolina. Uh -huh. Some of it was from us. Yeah. And it it got to be really hectic and. Hard a little to keep confusing. Track of. Yeah. yeah. So this time it'll all be coming out of our shop. Yeah. So by me and Allison. If you don't get an order, it's our fault. Yeah, There's truly. There's nobody else to worry about. <laughs> There's nobody else to blame. Like, 
everything is going to be shipped out by you and Allison. Yes. Right here out of our merch. Yes. And it is a pre-order, so it will take, it's not yeah, like you're yeah, going to yeah. get it in a day or two. It is a pre-order, yeah, so. Yeah, pre-ordered, so. Because we take a little bit of time. Idea. Like, we had no idea how much we would, you know, go through merch-wise with the Mustang. Mm-hmm. And we don't really have any idea what to even expect out of this. So yep. we're winging we're just it. We're doing pre-sale. Yeah. Uh, and we take the orders and make the orders for the shirts, and they'll be shipped out later. Yep. What are you filming? I was showing how pretty the car looks. Oh. <sighs> so. So can we talk about um, <sighs> the S10, Billy's S10? Are oh, yeah, we close? Yeah. What's yeah. going on? So... Yeah, you weren't up there, did they? Mm -mm. I, so, I need an update myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Billy's S10 engine goes on the dyno tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's coming back. Uh, we've got a new set of cylinder heads on it. A lot of people have been asking why has it been down for so long, and obviously we had some trouble with the heads that were on the truck. Mm -hmm. And we were doing a deal with Trick Flow with a set of 18-degree heads, and unfortunately those heads, the castings, just don't work out very well with turbo applications. They had some porosity problems this that and the other they recalled all the heads that they had in stock and they did the best they could for us mm -hmm. nobody knew that that was going to happen that's just part of the situation with uh when you've got a sponsorship deal part of the deal is you're you're doing some testing and research, research and development and, research and, development. <laughs> and unfortunately we found through research and development that those heads don't like turbo applications mm -hmm. so uh, we went ahead and bought a set of Brodix heads that are a different casting, a stronger casting, and those heads are now on the engine at Bob's, and uh, we're going to dyno it tomorrow. So, now that's exciting. Also today, you don't know this yet either. What? My Nova engine survived. What? It's not. No. Bad. No, I swear. I thought it for sure. sounded horrible, yeah, I know. honey. There's like, ch there's got to be chunks of stuff. I thought there would be. There wasn't. The valve train flew apart. What? It had fact. It used factory GM style hydraulic roller lifters. They're probably a Chinese deal. I don't know, but anyway, it had a factory hydraulic roller lifter in it, and the push rods, and the rocker arms, and everything just kind of blew apart. Like that engine was never intended to be revved to so, 6,500 plus RPM. So the block is okay. Yeah, it's freaking totally fine. It looks like new. Inside. So what do you have to replace? We need to put new cam lifters. Uh, push rods and um, we might a lot of accessories yeah. we need to beef up the valve train <laughs> like here's the thing like we've never had that mild of a small block Chevy with turbos on it mm -hmm. we've never done that we've always had pretty well built race engines this is the first time we've put a turbo on a small block with a very mild hydraulic roller cam and it turns out that when you blow boost up its butt it just <gasps> revs to Bill. what you can't say that I just did <laughs> when you throw a bunch of boost at it, uh, they rev, uh, regardless of the camshaft. So, yeah, he was shifting that thing. Billy was shifting at like 67, 6,800 RPM, and the cam's only rated to like 5,200. And the valve train flew apart. So. Listen, he was determined. He wanted one of those oh, Kent Rose trophies in the I, worst way. Oh, I told him. I said, I don't care if we scatter this thing in a million pieces. We're going home with a trophy. I want one of those trophies. So it was 100% <laughs> worth it. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. There's no question. But, uh, so yeah, that thing is going to live again. And he's talking about maybe putting it in that S10 that we're doing a giveaway on. Oh. Close to Christmas, the little blue hmm. S10 that's yeah. in the barn out back. Talking about maybe putting it on that with a blow-through carburetor and a single turbo, but I don't know. That's not definite. Not definite. It's just been tossed around. Yeah. All right. So, wait. There's another thing. Uh, we got to talk about Addy's engine. Yeah. Addy's car, We, as you saw in the video, we got it fired up. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, there was some things with that car that the suspension, I think the springs are way too stiff in it. It was sitting too high. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> after I left that night, her dad tore that car completely back apart and mm -hmm. removed all four springs out mm -hmm. underneath of it. So they're working on that. We need to get her car aligned, and we need to bring it up here to this shop to put a new anti-roll bar in the back end of it, just like mine. And I forgot to tell you, after you split to go to Bob's today, they came and brought her carburetor so that you could tweak oh, on yeah, it a little bit. There. It's sitting in there. So, so. I get on that too. Yep, I got to see that. Oh, and I showed I showed Addie's mom and dad the barn. Oh, <laughs> they got you? the they got a tour. Yeah. Good. 
So what else? Uh, what about, about Tommy's blue truck? Oh yeah, that thing's about ready to go back together. The um, the engines at Bob's, mm -hmm. and he's just about got it finished. So I'm thinking maybe in a week or so we should have that engine here and getting it ready to put back in Tommy's truck, and we need to start putting that thing back together. There's wow. gonna be a lot of now. What about the 55? Up. Well, we that's a whole other thing. You'll see in a video. Okay. <laughs> see, see, I don't even know. Like. People don't understand. I have no clue what's going on until I watch the video with y'all. <laughs> never has any clue what's going on. They don't, we don't communicate very well around here today. It's hard because we're always Ever. working. We're always moving. Y'all I know. All right. Are we done? Um, oh, can we talk about your special spray? Yeah, it's back in stock. It's it back in stock. Look at that. Old man's shine. Use it's, your uh, OMG code 15. Yeah, it's available on jackswax.com. Mm-hmm. Does a great job and it smells great. Is that it? Um, June, what do you think? Is that all? She's pacing. She's ready. <laughs> good. good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.